given an ellipse equation, graph the ellipse. And this is part two. So this time you have an equation. It doesn't look like a standard form. It certainly doesn't look like a circle because there's different numbers in front of the x squared and the y squared that's going to bend it out of shape. But it's an x squared and a y squared, so it's not a parabola. So we're going to try to take it toward an ellipse. And uh, the plus sign here is making it not a hyperbola, but we'll cover that next. So we're taking it toward the ellipse equation, which means we're going to have to get a 1 on the right-hand side. So we're going to divide through by 100 on both sides. So 125 is here. 104 is here. 100 divided by 100 is 1. So now we're a little closer. Now we reduce this, get the 1 fourth, get the 1 25th. Now write it more closely to the way it's supposed to be. Uh, x squared over 4, y squared over 25 equals 1. And then write them as squares. Even if they're square roots, you would put a square root and then squared there. Okay, so there's your equation. You immediately know that the a is the 5, because a is always the largest. It's always the largest. So a is 5, b is therefore the other one, 2. It's x minus 0 and y minus 0. So the hk center is 0, 0. The only thing left is the uh, defined is the c for the foci. You have this defining relationship. And c equals uh, the square root there, which is the square root of 25, that's a squared, minus b squared, which is 2 squared, it's 4. 25 minus 4 is 21, and the square root of that is approximately 4.6. Now let's just graph everything we have on here and try to graph this ellipse. So we put the center, HK center, right there, 0, 0. The major axis is in the Y direction because the A always lies under the major axis direction. And the A was there. And that's lined up under the Y. So it's long in the Y direction. So we're going to count over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the y direction, one, two, three, four, five. In the y direction, might as well label those as zero, five, zero, negative five. And then the b is the two, one, two, in the x direction, one, two. We've got a real oblong one, and might as well mark off the Foci, but let's first let's name these. Two zero. This is the covertice. Uh, negative two zero. And I'm going to put the foci in green, just because. So C is four point six. So the, they're on the major axis. So four point six is really close here. It's a little bit after the 4 it's right in there and 4.6 somewhere in there it's really close that's what's making it be so narrow can't seem to get it in there so we label these um, foci here 0 square root of 21, 0, negative square root of 21. Then I just wrote them all in a nice list here. Here's the vertices, 0, plus or minus 5. That's that one and that one. Co-vertices, plus or minus 2, 0. That's this one and this one. And the foci, 0, plus or minus square root of 21. That's this one, the green, and the green. Now let's fit it through with a nice ellipse. And there you have your ellipse, very oblong in the y direction because the foci were so tight 
to the vertices there, they were so far apart from the center uh, that it made it real oblong. Okay, now let's uh, show one other way to verify that we have all the right points, and that's right here. Looking back at this equation, when x is zero, that knocks this term off, and you get y squared over 25 equals one, so that solves out as y has to be plus or minus five. And zero plus or minus five is exactly what the vertices were, so those are correct. When y equals zero, you're gonna have x squared over four equals one, because the y term's gonna drop out. That means that x is have, gonna have to be plus or minus two, so when you square it, you're gonna get four over four, which is one. So plus or minus two comma zero should be the co-vertices, and they are. So everything is checking out.